The refrigerator's on the blink again. Margie working overtime? An hour or so. It hums again when you open it. Different hum than last time. Must be in the condenser. Hope it's only an hour. We have to be at the bowling alleys at seven sharp. What's more important, bowling or making time and a half pay? Money isn't everything. With you, it isn't even something. Woo. Every penny of Margie's overtime goes in her cash trousseau, doesn't it? The day we get married, Margie stops working. That's nice. If you want to eat, she'll have to go back the next day. I've got a business, haven't I? What, betting horses? I'm tapering off. You're not. Your money is. After you finish the icebox, you better look at the sink. That hot water faucet's dripping. Oh. Man, do I like gelatin. It's good for the connecting tissue. Believe me, Max, someday Margie's going to look in the mirror and start asking herself some questions. Margie's not like that. She knows we're only waiting until I can give her all the nice things she deserves. Marry her now. You can owe her the rest. You think Margie's getting unhappy? Not yet. But you better start thinking, Max. And stop being friends with everybody. Especially loafers like Gus and that other tramp who takes bets. What's his name? Rocky. He's okay. Gus, too. With you, everybody's okay. <sighs> Mind give me another vitamin, Mom? Thanks. You saw her, Margie? No, it's, it's just when I'm reminded that we've been engaged almost permanently. You know it'll be five years on Wednesday? Sure, I know. It's sort of an anniversary. We'll get married in a month. As soon as Gus Harris gets his trainer's license, I've got... I know, I know. You'll get at least one sure winner a week on his horses, and we'll make a fortune. And we'll have our own house, and a yacht, and I'll have a fur coat, and my old job. Don't talk like that. Gus will pass the exam this time. Max, why should our future depend on Gus? Besides, he'll never pass. This time, last time, no time. He'll pass this time for sure. I'm tutoring him. Hi, Max! Hi, Jerry! Okay, here's the next one. What is the trainer's responsibility in the stable area? A trainer is responsible for the care of all horses in his charge and the actions of all those he employs in and around the premises. Right. What does it mean, Gus? It means if one of my horses gets lit up, you know, hopped up, stimulated, I have to take the rap. Oh. You'd never stimulate a horse, would you? Who, oh, me? With all the tests they've got nowadays? Number 27. Mm. What is the basic pre-race requirement for a trainer? A horse must be in the receiving barn an hour before the race. Perfect. You're a cinch to pass. In my book, you're a trainer right now. Fine. Fine. All I need now is a couple of horses to run up and down your office. You're not the racing commission. When they start staring at me, I forget everything I remember. Don't talk like that, Gus. You gotta think positive. Margie's whole future depends on it. When you get in the examination room, don't look at the racing people. Just close your eyes. Max, do you think the racing commission will give a trainer's license to a guy with closed eyes? Lady Apple, what did you make her? You got a bet. Anybody else before I phone in? Come on, you still got time for the fourth race at Jamaica and Narragansett. Hat Rat looks very good. Okay, two bucks on Hat Rat. Cross the board at Narragansett. Smart bet. 
Narragansett. Oh. Come on, anymore? Nobody? Come on, you're gonna hunt your better bunch. Hey, Rocky. No give credit. me five. Crumb. Mooch. No credit. We let you use the premises to take these bets and never once the offer to kick in with a percentage of your commission. What is this we business? Who cut you in? You're the flyweight freeloading champ of all time. Max has been supporting you. When are you gonna get off his back? I pity you, Rocky. You don't know what real friendship is. Oh, I know what your idea of friendship is. Taking everything a guy's got without insulting him. Someday Max is gonna find out just what kind of a phony you are. Oh, Max knows I'm his friend. Don't I give him all my flat tire business? Sure. From your fleet of cabs. Now, oh, wait a minute. I gotta hack these license. That cab is legit business. You can start that motor and get to the racetrack without a driver. Listen. Quit it, quit it. It's all fixed, Rocky. Three patches. You owe me a deuce. Right. A deuce? Wait a minute. We'll bet it off. Well, I promise to take Margie to the movies. Don't worry, Max. After this horse wins, you can sit in the loges. Max, how long are you going to be a patsy for that guy? Why don't you put him out with the empty bottles next Thursday? Are you looking for a lump, Harold? Don't call me, Harold! Now, come on, come on. Well, who do you like, Gus? We haven't caught a winner in 29 straight races. But I think the tide's about to turn. Directory. The tide just went out. Can he win, Gus? He'll open up in front and win by five lengths. He's got speed bloodlines on his mother's side. Two to win on directory. Well, that's 30 in a row. You know, I should book this bet myself. Speed bloodlines on his mother's side. When I get my trainer's license, I'm gonna fight to keep creeps like you out of the sport of kings! Harold! Don't call me Harold! I'll call you anything I want to call on, you! Come on, come on. Hey, you mustn't get upset before the exam. Now, let's get our minds back to it. This is the part on a nat. Anatomy. And the first question is, describe the bone structure of the foreleg. Yeah. Gus, I've got absolute confidence in you this time. Describe the bone structure of the foreleg. The bone structure of the foreleg is... Well, Mr. Harris? Uh, would you repeat the question, please? Mr. Harris. Will you please describe the bone structure of the foreleg? The femur. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Harris? The femur... The femur. Mr. Harris, you'll receive your official notification through the mail. He just kept staring at me. Like my second grade teacher. I flunked there, too. But the racing board hasn't sent you an official notification. Don't you take my word? I'll I tell Margie. We've had four blood tests in five years. That's right. That's right. Just think of your own petty little problems. That's right. I'm sorry, Gus. But I can't stand seeing Margie look sad. It's like being stabbed. Someday, someday I'm going to get me a lot of money and I'm going to get a few horses. And then I'll show them all. That Rocky, that second grade teacher, all of them. You want that pretty bad, don't you, Gus? Hmm. Boy, do I. Hey, Max. Listen, let's shoot the works, huh? Let's grab ourselves a big wad of dough. I'll pick us a long shot, and we'll bet the whole thing, huh? Sounds great, Gus. But how do we get the money? Oh, ain't that always a way? A guy comes up with a big idea, and there's always a guy around to say, how? 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 How much can you raise on this place? Not a cent. The banks don't give third mortgages. Banks? Ugh, I hate them. I tried to get a loan once, and they asked me where I worked. Hey, here's a guy that knew how to handle a bank. 7,000 bucks worth. Ooh. I'm gonna need energy when Margie asked me how you made out. Ooh. Hey, Max, don't you ever need any water to swallow? My swallow tube is bigger than average. Uh, you don't ever have to use any water to swallow? You could swallow anything without water, could you? 
Could you swallow uh, paper? Paper? Why should I swallow paper? Well, could you? Sure, if I wanted to. But I don't want to. There's no food value in paper. Not even if you could own 50% of a, a very important racing stable, huh? Gus, you sound like me when I promised Margie. Blowing dream bubbles, she calls it. All you'd have to do is swallow a little wad of paper and you could own 50% of a big stable and to boot marry Margie and have eight kids if you wanted to. By swallowing a little bit of paper? Sure. Could you, could you swallow a piece of paper, say, about this big? If it was all wadded up, you know? I think so, but why? That's wonderful. You could swallow the evidence. What evidence? You've been a boy twice. Twice in two months. The other day, a guy hits me with three wins. Everything happens in threes. Better me again today. He's going to sixth place right there. And there he gets it. Max, I'm going to let you in on something big. An idea like this only comes along once in a lifetime. We are going to rob a bank. You're crazy. It'll solve all your problems. Listen to me. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not interested. All right, you want to go ahead and be a marriage welcher all your life? Church. I don't care if it's safe or not. All I have to do is to have Margie all find right. out. And I'm a right. don't marry Margie. Or better yet, go ahead and marry. And let love suffocate under a big pile of bills. Or better yet, let her keep working. And let a beautiful thing turn into an ugly hag just because you didn't want to take a chance. Gus, I know you're thinking of Margie's happiness. But I can't rob a bank. What did a bank ever do for you? Think of it as being just a, a big loan. But supposing I can't pay it back? That's the beauty of it. Nobody knows you made it, huh? Gus, you make it sound right, but there's a little hole in there somewhere. I can't do it. All right. All right, don't ever come to me for help again. Listen, I'm trying to make a picture. I guess you have to go ahead and I brought my vitamins. I need energy. Gus failed the exam, didn't he? Didn't he? He knew all the answers. But he failed. The racing board has not sent him the official notification as yet. Boy, I wish I had a vitamin. I brought one from the house. Oh, thanks, honey. You saved my life. How long do they wait? Who? The racing board. I don't know. I, well, I think it's about three weeks. Maybe less. All right, Max. I'll wait. Three weeks. Show it to him once and then swallow it as fast as you can. Okay. We should have told Rocky. Let's send him an announcement. If the cashier starts to make any noise, remember, you're here on legitimate business.
Where are you going? Just like we planned. I'm gonna be at the door, backing you up. Morning, sir. Good morning. Can I get one of your change sacks? Uh, large or small? Better make it large. There's a two dollar deposit on the large sack. Okay. Here is a list of the change I need. Please hurry up. My friend at the door is nervous. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, right away. Mm -hmm. This is all my currency. Do you want the silver, too? No. Thank you very much. Remember. Don't yell or anything till I get outside. Otherwise, my friend will have to blow up the bank with you inside. Oh, I, I won't, sir. I, I promise. Get up, Sydney. This minute. Have you gone insane? Hold up, hold up. We've been held up. The one at the door had the nitro explosive. That's what the note said. Give me the note. Yes, sir. I can't. He ate it. This is station WKBX. It's five seconds before 12 o'clock noon, and time for On the Hour News Headlines. Paper-eating bandits hoax Mercantile Bank out of $30,000. That's us! Swallow robbery demand note and escape without a trace. Legislature That's what I call planning. Without a trace! It's strange hearing somebody talk about you on the radio. How come he says 30,000? That's approximate. I don't think he said approximate. He said 30,000. Well, go ahead and count it. Go on, count it. It's right here. There's 28,650. Do you think I'd steal? I guess 30,000 sounds better. I'll get you a beer. Thanks. After we get on our feet, that's all we're going to pay back. $28,650. they will have to take our word for it. The insurance company will pay the bank back long before that. Okay, then we'll send them the money. Anonymously. Who pays back an insurance company? I do. A loan's a loan. Max, you're an interesting case. Have you got any cheese or chocolate cookies around? More than three units. I gotta fix it for somebody to be around and feed them while we're away. Now, what do I tell Margie? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nobody can tell Margie nothing. If you want to be happy, you start. You start right now. Now back to the headlines and the stories behind them. The thirty thousand dollar holdup at the Mercantile Bank occurred at ten thirty thousand. While several customers... Who are you going to believe? He or me? You. On their normal operations but he keeps on saying 30,000. Number 1-1-2. 
two, tattooed man. A four-year-old son of Spotted Jack out of Michigan, Queen. She by that good stallion, Michigan Blue Boy. Tattooed man was a winner last year, and also the year before. All right, start along there, we'll give five thousand for you. Hey, we'll give five thousand, we'll give five thousand, we'll give five, we'll give five, we'll give five thousand, we'll start along there, five thousand, we'll four thousand dollars in. We'll give four thousand. One thousand. Thousand dollars. Man wants to rent it. <laughs> Well, I suppose we all have to start somewhere. Would you start the coach for $4,000, sir? Start it along. What do you get for a time for it? What do you get for? What do you get for? What do you say for? Three thousand. Three thousand on your man. Thank you. Every boy's an improvement. Yes, sir. What do you get for a time for it? Three thousand. What do you get for? What do you get for? Three thousand. Four thousand. What do you get for? What do you get for? Let me make a bid, Gus. I'm the trainer. I'll do the bidding. Just once. Please, let me once. That's all. Let me concentrate, please. Thirty-one hundred. I have thirty-one hundred. Bargain night. Now let's give four thousand for it. If we're fifty-fifty partners, ought to have a right to make a bid. Thirty-two hundred. Thirty-two. Ah, uh, thirty-two from your man. Now we're out the back there, sir. What are you for? One little bid wouldn't kill you, would it? Thirty-three hundred. I'm bid thirty-three. Now we'll make it an even four thousand. Do I hear four thousand? Four thousand? Four thousand. Four thousand. Thank you. What do you get? Forty-three hundred. What are you doing? I'm your partner. That's okay. You can have the next bid. But you're upping my bid. What's the difference? Somebody will bid more. Fourth on, let get forty-two hundred. You say forty-two. Fourth on, going once at four thousand dollars. Going twice at four thousand. Somebody will bid more. I sold it to that man back there at four thousand dollars. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Where's Max? Oh, you Rocky? Yeah. Uh, Max left word it's okay for you to operate. Where'd he go? I didn't ask them. Them? You mean Max and Margie? Margie? Is that the little guy's name? Gus. They must have told you where they were going. No, they just had to come in twice a day to feed the animals. Well, how long are they going to be gone? Must be uh, three weeks. That's how long they paid me. Paid you? In advance. There's one thing I insist upon, the rules. Follow them to the letter. When I was training horses on the East Coast, they used to call me, follow the rules, Harris. For instance, a trainer is responsible for the care of all horses in his charge and for the actions of all those he employs in and around the premises. Look, Mr. Harris, See, if we get started, I got three more horses to work before breakfast. Three more horses? I, I thought for 150 a month you were exclusive. For a yard and a half a month, nobody's exclusive. Yeah, you can say that again. Uh, all right, Max, bring out the big horse. Don't touch that horse, mister. And who are you? I'm Grayson, union delegate. You gotta hire somebody to walk your horse. Oh, no, we don't. My partner walks the horse. I'm the partner. You belong to the union? Oh, sure. Auto mechanics, local 16. They got no jurisdiction over hot walkers. I got an application blank, membership fees, $100 in advance. Wait just a minute. One small minute, please. We happen to know our rights. He's an owner, and an owner doesn't have to be unionized. You keep talking like that, mister, and we'll throw pickets all around you. You'll throw pickets around who? Around you. You and your. I can't ride through a picket line, Mr. Harris. You could say that again. Max, sign it. Be a hundred dollars, huh? I also represent the grooms. Another hundred in advance. What is this? A stick up or something? Back east when I'm. You praying, want pickets? Sign it, Max. Two hundred dollars. <clears throat> Is it all right for me to bring out the cold, or do I have to sign an application? We got no jurisdiction over trainers. Uh. Grayson? You ever heard of this Gus Max outfit? No. He says he was big in the east. Back in the east, he's big in the west. You can say that again. I hear the horses spooky. 
Sweet Susie, look at him. He's going in there like a one-man suicide squad. Stand still now. Get over there. Go on. Think we ought to tell him? We got no jurisdiction over trainers. Oh! 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 You heard Gus? Oh! I, I told you not to bid on that horse. He's a killer. No, Gus. No. He's just not used to you, that's all. Ah. That's the trouble, isn't it, boy? You'll like Gus when you get to know him, won't you? Excellent. Don't, don't go in there. He'll, he'll kick your brains out. Ah, uh, you wouldn't do a thing like that, would you, boy? No, no. You're like Max Fine. <laughs> the wrong guy's training. You can say to anybody. I'll get him dressed if somebody will bring out the saddle and stuff. Get him dressed? Go on, Benji. Help the man get the horse he dressed. That trainer, Gus Harris. <laughs> Who else could it be? Tattooed man, owners, Gus Mac Farms. Trainer, Gus Harris. It's got to be them Rockies. Stolen horses with what? You don't buy a horse on time like refrigerators? Maybe they made a big bundle betting. What chump ever made money betting on the horses? Get your bets in a silly post time. Well, I got to go along on a sentimental hunch. Five to win on Tattooed Man. I'll take two across the board. You're on. Me too, two across. Same bet. Ah, so the old lady won't get a birthday present. Make it six. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I gotta phone in these donations. Gus and Max. Maybe someday I'll own a horse. You've got five kids. Eh, it's not the same. I'm the trainer. I'm... Uh, I... Watch his head. I bet $50 for you on this horse. Good. My wife can use it. Hey, when I was on the East Coast, I used to make a good bet for all the riders who rode for me, especially when I had a good thing going. Nice habit, hey, Gus. Now, look, uh, if there's speed in the race, take him back about second or third, lay there, and lay off the pace. You know what I mean? Uh, but if there's hey, no Gus, speed, I'm... I, let him go right to the front if he wants to. This colt has got good bloodlines. Okay. Mount your riders. Well, come on, son. Watch, watch his head, watch his head. Watch, watch his head. Gus forgot to introduce me. I'm half owner, Max Rutgers. Watch his head. Oh, yeah. Did you say you were one of the owners? Yeah. 50-50. Can't you fellas afford a groom? Oh, sure. It's only because I get along with animals. Cats, dogs, horses. I like people, too. Get along with all of them. I'll take them, fella. Oh, that's OK. I'm fine. I'm happy you're fine. But this horse got to run a race today. Uh, you'll get him back later. See you in the winter circle, 50-50. I'll be waiting.
Number six, four tickets to win. Number six, four tickets to win. Okay. Number six, five tickets to win. Number six, five tickets to win. Number six to win six times. Number six, six times to win. It is now post time. Spot selection. The turf service with the time-tested information now brings you the result of the fourth race at Highland Park. Come on, Max. Come on. Come on, Come on. tattooed man. Come on. Run the bin. Come on. Gregory was the winner. Live Oak was second. And Vitality ran third. Nothing. What else? Guys don't stop being jerks just because they're 3,000 miles away. First of all, you blow $4,000 and buy this beetle, and then you blow $1,500 and bets. You bet the $1,500, Gus. You should have started easy. Four or five dollars, maybe. That's what I get for trying to make a big man out of a guy with a petty soul. Max, this badge mean anything to you? I'm very proud of it. Well, then don't quibble about a few bucks. I'm sorry. It takes a lot of courage to bet that kind of money. I guess I just didn't appreciate it. Uh, I guess you didn't. Just remember, Max, that when you wear this, you're important. And that's what counts, being important. I'll see you back at the motel. Cheer up, boy. You tried. Can't win them all. Now, don't take those things Gus said to heart. You look good losing, honest. Want one? Don't say how many a horse should take. Mm. Mm. You got a big swallow tube, too. <laughs> something for you. How about that, eh? How about that? Atta boy, atta boy. I didn't forget you, killer. And your friend. Atta baby, atta boy, baby. Just the way you like it. Just the way you like it, baby. Medium rare, atta boy, atta baby. Too fast, big? It's a buck eighty-five a pound, you jerk. In case a burglar had dropped in, we wouldn't want him to think that Max wasn't neat, would we? Hey, huh, Big? Have some dessert, boy. That a boy. Big, where did Uncle Max get the money to buy a horse? 
You can tell me. I'm your friend. Did a rich relative kick the bucket? He didn't get that money returning empty bottles. Did he rob a bank? Did he print up some fret? I don't believe it. It can't be. Maybe it's the vitamins. Yeah. What vitamins? Mine. We're on the same schedule. Four a day before meals. Are you trying to get me ruled off the turf? Don't you know if you drug a horse that I'm responsible? Drug him. If he's drugged, so am I. It's just pure A, C, and D vitamins for building bone and muscle. Are you sure? Do I look drugged? No. You've always had that look. Well, how'd he go, Mr. Harris? Great, he ran the mile in 130. 44 and 4. Max thinks that's fast. It is for nanny goats. What's the idea? Why not tell Fitz? What would you do without me? Come on. Do you know what a mile in 37 means? Max, I'm gonna make you a rich man. That's what I've been telling Margie for years. Gus, I owe you a lot. Forget it. Someday you can do me a favor. Come on. I've got him spotted perfectly. There isn't another horse in the race can do better than 139. I figure we got 10 lengths the best of it. As soon as we collect, we'll pay back the bank, and I'll send for Margie. Oh, he could, he could be 10 to 1, maybe 15 to 1. This picture looks prettier every day. I just hope nobody finds out about the good workout and murder the prize. We can visit my aunt in Buffalo. Or maybe Hawaii would be more romantic. How far is it, Gus? A mile and an eight. How far is what? Hawaii from here. I'm taking Margie there on our honeymoon. <laughs> Why don't you take her to the Fairhaven meet where there's 40 days of racing and eight races a day? <laughs> Gus, just wait till you have a girl all your own. It, it, it gives you a nice warm feeling inside. Well, if I could find a girl that'd do a mile of 137 flat, then maybe I'd settle down. See who it is, will you? Look who's here. Uh -oh, uh oh, when a mooch like this spends a buck to come across the country, something smells bad. How did you know we were here? Well, I've been watching the career of the Gus Max Farms. You got a clean record. No winners. <laughs> Not for long, Rocky. You wait uh -oh. until. Until what, Max? Rocky, look, if you, uh, if you could use maybe 10 or 20, I could let you have it. Or, or you're fair back home. Pullman. Not me. I just want what's coming to me. I won't have any appetite for the next few days. Here, take 50 bucks. 10,000 bucks. One third of the mercantile bank sticker. That's real crummy, Rocky. Snooping around my place. Breaking and entering. You could go to jail for that. That's fine. We'll all be together again, the three of us. Hold them, will you, Max? I'm gonna make you. I left a letter in my safety deposit vault. It's addressed to the DA, and if anything happens to me. All the time I'm trying to plan for our future, I, I tried to tell you about this kind you of thing. You should have asked Sims for the key. But we did leave without even saying goodbye to Rocky. Now, how do you think I felt about that? When things were rough, we shared everything. The first big thing you do, like robbing a bank, you don't even invite me. We should have asked you, Rocky. But it was a very small bank. Max, you were always talking about friendship. And the first time you get a big cake, do I get a slice? Do I? Do I? If we buy you a cake, will you leave? A $30,000 cake and not even a slice for Rocky. It was only $28,650. All right, steal a little. I just want to feel like I belong. I want my cut. Look, we don't have it. You understand? We just don't have the money. We bought a couple of horses with it. Our living expenses Don't cost tell us... me your sad story. Oh, that's on the level, Rocky. All we got left is the horse and $4,000.
and we need the cash to bet on Tattooed Man. He worked the mile in 137. You ain't gonna bet my share on any nag that... 137? He's been taking my vitamins, the new ones, triple action. Nothing in the race ever run faster than 139. Let me see that form. You have just baked a cake. How does this coat like to go? Fast. He worked the distance yesterday morning in 137 flat. Could be he's a morning glory. No speed afternoon. No, sir, not this guy. He lives clean. This race means a lot to him. How much did he bet on himself? <laughs> 17, 18, 19, 20, number 10, 20 times to win. Thank you. Number 10, right? Number 10 to win, yes, sir. Get it all down? Yeah, yeah. Except ten dollars for dinner. What are you doing? You're overweight already. All right. Give me all the tickets. Let's keep them together. What do you think? You're playing with kids or something? You take the tickets, I gotta watch you instead of the race. What kind of a crack it is, is that? Now post time. Come on. It's 14 to 1. 14 to 1? That's, uh, that's $18,666 each profit. The flag is up. They're up. It's a huge field of the perfect start. Racing from the number 10 position, that's Tattoo Man. Ah! Go on, buddy, Let him go! Ah! 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 Racing into the clubhouse turn now, that's Tattoo Man by a half a length. The Spaniard is second by a length. Let him go, Ryder. Let him run. Let him run. In the back stretch, tattooed man under restraint, still in front by a half a length. Fullerton is second by a length and a half. The Spaniard is third by a half, and Puskal is fourth. Open up with him. Open up with him. In the stretch turn now, that's tattooed man still in front by a half. Puskal is right up there beside him, second by three and a half. Archway is third, and Fullerton is fourth. Open up on him. More, more. Open up. Now as the horses race in the stretch, that's Tattooed Man extending his lead. It's Tattooed Man by five full lights. Who's got it? Come on for Margie and Hawaii. Don't fall down, please. Don't fall down. down. Man in front by four lights. Who's got his second? Archway is third and Tattooed Man. Clamp, what a trainer, what a champion! What are you surprised at? I had him figured all, all out. <laughs> Come on, let's get down to the winner's circle. Like me, gentlemen. Your attention, please. The stewards are inquiring into the running of the race. Oh. Inquiry? Oh, no. He didn't follow nobody. It's a mistake, ain't it? Oh, I don't know, unless somebody found out about the match. Who knows about the vitamins? Well, just the three of us and Tattooed Man. Attention, please. The claim of foul has been lodged against the winner. The protest is that number 10, Tattooed Man, crowded the field, crossing to the rail position. Please hold all tickets while the stewards are viewing the motion pictures of the race. Your attention, please. After viewing the motion pictures, the stewards have disqualified number 10, Tattooed Man, and placed him last. The official order finish is number 5, Puskow, the winner, number 3, Archway, second, number 9, Fullerton, third, and number 4, the Spaniard, fourth. The results of the fourth race are now official.
He wants his vitamins. I hope he chokes on them. Any horse that cost me 17 grand has no right to be healthy. Why blame him? You didn't ask to be born a horse, did you, boy? I had the world right in the palm of my hand. Right there I had it. And then this, this... Gus, you're just sore because I don't want to swallow any more paper. Max, nature gives you a large swallow tube. It's a shame to waste it. I never turned you down on a favor before, did I? I can't go on robbing banks. One isn't too bad if you're going to pay them back. But I don't want it to become a habit. All right, don't do it for us. Do it for yourself. Who needs the scratch to get married anyway? You. And there's a boy that's always thinking. Margie will understand. Margie will understand. Sure, Margie will marry somebody else. And you can become a nice, close friend of the family. When you come over to visit the kids, you can bring toys to them. I'm going to call your uncle. And you'll die inside. Because it could have been daddy. I don't want him to catch a chill. Horses don't have much resistance. Something's happened since he met that horse. We're losing him. Rocky. We've been awfully selfish. Just worrying about ourselves, not worrying about how tattooed man feels. There he was, five lengths in front, the crowd cheering him on. And then by some cruel stroke of fate, instead of being somebody, he's nobody. He only had a chance to run again. Yeah. But 75 bucks a week for feed and 30 for us? No, we don't count. Slobs like us don't count. Amongst the four of us, he's the only one that could make it. Yeah. He's proven that he could make it big. When you get close and miss, that's doubly sad. If he had another chance to run, he could stand in the winner's circle of the Fairhaven 50 grander. You know, everybody should have a chance to stand in the winner's circle once in a lifetime. Now you'll never know how it feels. If I walk into a bank and swallow paper again, they'll know it's just a lot of words and a bag full of oranges. But this time we won't make any mistakes. A professional job. We've had experience now. Yeah, we'll get a nice little bank from the phone book out of the classified section. But this is the last time. It's just like borrowing dough to put a new roof on a house. <laughs> Maybe from what we can get from this bank, we can pay back the mercantile bank. I don't like to owe too many banks. You're right. It ruins your credit. Gonna get your chance, boy. The Fairhaven 50 grand. And this time, no foul. Do it for Rocky, Gus, and Margie. She's like always. Two more minutes. Running a special on mixed pickles. 12-ounce jar for 29 cents. Put that down. She's here. Of the groceries. I'll 
Hi. Now there's a dame you can count on. Same routine every day. Yeah. She opens up at 8.15, locks up at 5.20, home for dinner at 6.17. Very dependable. Sure. But don't blame me if you get a heartburn. Here. Now we'll park the old girl's car right where she does. And I park my cab right alongside of her. Sure, with your name all over it. What a mastermind. Oh, we need something plain for this job, something black or gray. Marjorie has a plain-looking job. Let's keep Margie out of this. Are we robbing a bank or shooting for the Good Citizenship Award? Tell her it needs a tune-up or something. Matter of fact, it does. You know, it's the second bottle of beer you knocked over today. Don't steam me up. This is no time to get me steamed up. Excuse me. Get the suitcase. Whoa. No guns. No guns. You want to scare that old lady to death? Oh, Max, we got to worry her a little, don't we? Here, boys. Here's your glasses. No glasses. Why no glasses? Look, they must still be looking for two guys wearing dark glasses, and I don't want to be one of them. Can't we just put our hands in our pockets like this? Max, we got to have guns to show her that we're sincere. Come on. You heard me. Quit fooling with the gun. It's sticking me in the stomach. Watch it. Here she is. You don't stop wiggling belt <gasps> He's just kidding, ma'am. We wouldn't belt you. It's perfectly safe. All we want is the money down at your bank. Your bank robbers? 
Oh, no, not really. It's a little hard to explain. You look like such a nice boy. Why don't you belt the for luck and don't lean on me? Move over a little this way, ma'am. Please don't be angry. But I can't get that money. We've been watching you from the supermarket. We know you've got the key to the bank. But not to the vault. The vault is opened in the morning by someone else. Who? Mr. Schroeder, Milburn Schroeder, from the main office. That's no, excuse me, please. Problem? As soon as it's dark, we'll go down to the bank and wait inside for Mr. Schroeder. can't go in now. It's lit up like Times Square. We can drive around till everything's closed up. Elsie bangs that piano at 4 a.m. It's a nice night for a drive. Have you ever seen the lights of the city from Sutter's Rock? Dazzling. Mister, why don't you go tell the rest of our gang to stand by till we get back? Right. I'll tell him. That's the Conway building. Four more hours till closing. I have a suggestion. Why don't we drive over to Mr. Schroeder's house and have him open the vault as soon as the tavern closes? But he can't open it. Belter! It's the truth. No one can open the vault until the safety timer goes off. Oh, dear, I think I'm going to faint. Lady, you do that, I'll stop the car and I'll belt you right between the eyes. Rocky, don't talk like that. You feeling okay, ma'am? I'm going to faint. Put your head down and take deep breaths. <laughs> Rocky, take her to a station. Oh, no. Take her to <clears throat> station. Let her faint. She's been yakking in this ear for three and a half hours. Never mind that. Just do what I said. We got to draw a dizzy day. Go on. Step on it. Be there in a few minutes, ma'am. This way, ma'am. Wash your face, you'll feel better. What is this, a social date or something? Shh. Why don't we get another girl to go dancing? Shh, not so loud. Well, who ever heard of running a robbery like this? Busting an old lady's room. Rocky, she's a woman. We've got to keep her morale up till morning. Two screwballs like you. I'm quitting. First thing you know, he'd be taking hold of an all night movie or something. Rocky! 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 Just relax, ma'am. Everything's gonna be fine. You look much better. Everything's okay. Excuse me, ma'am. I have to talk to the head of the gang. I, uh, I thought it would be safer to park it with the overnighters. Oh, yeah. Where's, uh, where's Rocky? He called us screwballs, you and me, and then he walked out. Walked out? Why? 
because I did a gentlemanly thing for Mrs. Havens. Oh. Come on, let's take her inside and wait. Wait a minute, Max. Don't you ever pull a heist without me. Look, I gotta pull her car out of here and bring it back at 8.15 just like she does. Now, when the vault man goes in, I've gotta bring Margie's car around here and park it. Get ready for the getaway, you got it? Gus, you got a real brain for this kind of thing. I'll give you her car keys as soon as I open the bank. This way, ma'am. It's not an automatic shift. to raise the blinds. Mrs. Haven. Don't get nervous. Now take off your things. I mean, just what you take off before Mr. Schroeder gets here. What kind of work are you usually doing when he gets here? Dusting. That's fine. Go on and dust. Mrs. Havens. <laughs> What's wrong? Aren't you feeling well? Just a little upset. <laughs> you must be Mr. Schroeder. Please see that the door is locked. Here, here's my wallet. There are a few dollars in there. Take it. We don't rob people. Check the door. Now move to the vault. Open it up. No, I won't do it. Mr. Schroeder, oh please, Mr. Schroeder. The rest of the gang is outside. Thank you, Mrs. Havens.
bring out those trays. Open up the main compartment. Oh, I can't. Not, not until the safety timer goes off, and that won't be for three minutes. We'll wait. <laughs> I'll get you some water. That's the way to stop hiccups. No. <laughs> Would it help if I scared you? Why don't you take this money and leave? I only mean it in your best interest. The bank employees will be coming in any minute, and then the customers will be lining up. Mr. Schroeder, don't get nervous. Everything will work out fine. Well, sometimes the, the police come around, too. Time's nearly up. <laughs> Better get in there. No use knocking. They won't let us in for a while yet. Bring it out. Inside. Mr. Schroeder. Hey in there. Take a look. It's a policeman. It's Lee. How about it? I told you. Can you cash out paychecks? Tell him he has to wait. Like everybody else. In a few... In a few minutes, officer. You'll have to wait a few minutes. <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, ma'am, but you'll have... You'll have to go in... Go in there. Please don't come out, no matter what! Why can't I wait in the laboratory with Mrs. Havens? Because this is no time to ask questions, Mr. Schroeder. When we go out, smile and tell that officer the bank is going to open up in a couple of minutes. Then we go straight to the car I've got waiting. You, me, and this gun. Now let's go. 
September, there's no need to be nervous. Good morning. Uh, how about catching our paycheck? In a few minutes. Uh, is it uh, all right if I wait inside? Yes, sir, that will be fine. Go right in. Right. Right. We'll take your car. Mine? No, no, not mine. You've been nothing but trouble, Mr. Schroeder. I'll give you two seconds, just two seconds. Now smile. Mr. Schroeder, I'm going to drop you at the next corner. When I stop the car, jump out. But the gang will be watching you. They're behind us, so don't start yelling. Oh, I, I won't, I won't. Seventy pounds, wearing a gray fedora and a dark brown suit, has a small chin dimple. Repeat, about five foot eleven, one hundred and seventy pounds. Is this all you've got? No, just the smallest. Then report back to me. Yes, sir. How many times have you seen them in the market? About three or four. The tall one always bought mixed pickles. Well, that's the one that used to always say hello to Jimmy. Officer! Officer! I have some information! Pass that lady through. 
Did you get a good look at him, madam? Just before the robbery, I mean when the policeman drove up, I saw someone pull out in an awful hurry. Do you recall what the car looked like? Oh, yes. A Ford Gray two-door, um, 50 or 51. Uh, the license letters were the same as my husband's initials. Martin Gambard. You know, the architects, Gambard and Peterson. M.G. Um, yes, uh, there was a six or something. Charlie. Hold for more. Have motor vehicles. Check out all 50 and 51 Ford two-door. Tarleton County license, M.G., and the first number is probably a six. M.G. Six. Ten grand. What happened to you? Well, when the patrol car pulled up, I had to cut out. Leaving me behind. Look, I figured, why should they nab us both? If they don't nab me, I could have I could have gotten you a good lawyer. You could beat the rap. You could plead insanity. Where's the dough? It's beautiful. Beautiful. Two hundred and ten grand. That means a hundred and five grand a piece, partner. Well, how about Rocky? Nothing. The rat ran out on us. First thing we gotta do is pay back the mercantile bank. Twenty-eight thousand six fifty plus a hundred and forty-five interest. Retroactive to date. I got it all figured out. Well, don't be in a rush. With this kind of dough, they'll trust us. Then when tattooed man wins the fifty grander. What'd you do with Margie's car? I parked it in the lot near her office. Oh, I, I spent four dollars for gas. But uh, you can forget it. Max! Max! You did it. You did it. Seventy grand a piece. The board of directors just had an emergency meeting, and you are out. What is this weasel saying? Well, Rocky, you walked out on me last night. Oh, now, wait a minute. Nobody puts the squeeze on Rocky. I know my legal rights. Rocky helped with the planning. I think he's entitled to something. Entitled to something? All right, you can pay his dentist bill after I knock his teeth out. Why, you little... Oh. Here's 10,000. That seems fair, Rocky. Don't forget to put it on your income tax, you chiseler. You... Okay, okay. But you guys are gonna hear from my lawyer. I'm gonna sue you for 60,000 bucks. The Tarleton Bank robbery ranks as one of the largest hauls in recent times. Police believing it to be the well-planned work of a highly organized mob. According to Mrs. Havens and Mr. Schroeder, Proceeding east on Rosemont. Roger, we're in contact. turned onto the parkway. Roger. We have her. This is Lieutenant Green to main office. Give me a car at every exit along the parkway. Here she comes.
subject has stopped at 810 Marston Street. She is now leaving the car. Lieutenant Green. It is now 6.04. Subject has made contact with gang. We will move in at exactly 6.07. Proceed quietly and take assigned positions. Everybody up against the wall. Arms up high. Where's the rest of the gang? They're not the gang. This is my fiancée, Miss Solitaire, and that's my future mother-in-law, Mrs. Solitaire. <laughs> Max! It all started with my big swallow tube. Some of the money is missing, but I can get the rest of it. Honey, can you let me have 20 cents? I spent it for bus fare. In the stretch, it's Tattooed Man by a half a length. Silver Queen is second, and Roustabout moving up fast. And here's the finish. Tattooed Man. <laughs> ah! 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 Tattooed Man wins the 50 grand. <laughs> Standing in the winner's circle. What a day for him. Maybe we ought to send him a telegram congratulating him, huh? <laughs> uh, did, did you see the way he laid off the pace? Till the three quarters, then he come on, gave him the works, huh? That's just the way I'd run him. Oh, yeah. Great trainer in his day. The results are now official. Tattooed Man is the winner of the Fairhaven. What a Cinderella story. Acquired early this year by a bank in a forced sale from the Gus Max farm, Tattooed Man went from claiming Watch races it. to today's 50 grander. Congratulations, Max. Thanks. Well, I'm glad I didn't book that race. We'd have still owned that horse if you hadn't run out on us. What do you mean, me run out? You're the guy that ran out, Yellow Belly. Yellow. Who are you calling Yellow Belly, Harold? Don't call me Harold. I'll call you anything. Quit I... it, quit it, fellas. After all, nobody's gonna run out on nobody for a long time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>